Beginning next week, we'll take a closer look at the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is one of the Church's dogmatic teachings with regard to the Trinity. Since we're going to examine the Church's dogmatic teaching, I thought it would be good to give a brief lesson this week on what a dogma is. A dogma is a truth about God or about God's work in the world. These articles of truth are found implicitly or explicitly within the scriptures, whether by solemn pronouncement or by the ordinary, universal, and consistent teaching of the church, dogmas are to be believed by the faithful. In exercising her authority to define a dogma, the church is guaranteed that her teachings are infallible. This guarantee is rooted in the immutability of God himself, whose being never changes, and who is always faithful with regard to his plan in the economy of salvation. Since dogmatic definitions concern God himself, or God's work in the economy, in this sense the dogmas themselves can be considered immutable. Despite this talk about the immutability of dogma, dogmatic statements are not ahistorical in nature. Revelation itself takes place in history. The books of the Old and New Testaments are situated within a given time, place, and culture. Despite this historical nature, dogmas still have a permanently valid meaning. There is, with the help of the guidance of the Holy Spirit, a certain rule of language that pertains to dogmatic statements. This is seen in the words of Pope Paul VI in his Mysterium Fide. And I quote, the church, therefore, with a long labor of centuries and not without the help of the Holy Spirit, has established a rule of language and confirmed it with the authority of the councils. This rule, which has more than once been the watchword and banner of the Orthodox faith, must be religiously uh, preserved. And let no one presume to change it at his or her own pleasure or under the pretext of new science. Who would ever tolerate that the dogmatic formulas used by the ecumenical councils for the mysteries of the Holy Trinity and the Incarnation can be judged as no longer appropriate for men and women of our times, and therefore that others are rashly substituted for them. In the same way, it cannot be tolerated that any individual should on his or her own authority modify the formulas which were used by the Council of Trent to express belief in the Eucharistic mystery. For these formulas, like the others which, which the Church uses to propose the dogmas of the faith, express concepts which are not tied to a certain form of human culture, nor to a specific phase of human culture or development, or to any theological school. Some object that the dogmas are stifling to the theological process and to academic freedom. Dogmas should not be thought of as limits to our creativity or, or our scholarly research. Instead, dogmas should be likened to the stars in the heavens. They are immovable guides on our theological journey. We can go wherever we want to go, as long as we follow the stars. Until next week, God bless.